All right. And we're here. Welcome. Welcome to the podcast. This is Just Dippin'. I'm Zane Garcia. <laughs> and I'm Shane Black. And today we're just dipping. <laughs> today we're just we're just dipping. Uh, so this is a new podcast we got. We're gonna cover topics from movies to sports to music, maybe the occasional comic book. I don't know. Mainly we'll, mainly we'll just see what happens. Yeah, mainly <clears throat> mainly movies and sports though. So to start off, Shane, what have you been watching, the man? Uh, you mean like TV or movies? Um, we'll go go most recent. What's the most recent thing you've seen? Um, well, I just finished the second season of Daredevil. Oh, on Netflix. You just finished it. <laughs> yeah, I well got. Behind. Uh, yeah, I got way behind on it. Mm. But uh, I just finished it a couple days ago. What are your thoughts? Freaking incredible show! God, I love right? that show. I think it's probably the best thing Netflix has made. Yeah. In my personal opinion, but mm-hmm. I'm a comic book fan, so that gives it the edge. But man, just as a show in general, it's pretty insane how good of a show that is. Yeah, yeah. I, what I like about that show too is they they stay true to the comics, but then they don't they aren't like so married to the comics that yeah, it gets not, in the way of their own story. Yeah, they're not held down exactly. by the comics, and they make it their own. Mm-hmm. They definitely use the comics as a nice guide, <laughs> and they also I like how they kind of build off of the movies without being forced to tie into the movies so much. Yeah. And how they have, you know, references to the first Avengers movie without, you know, making it about the Avengers. They pave their own path and mm-hmm. their own story really with it. Yeah, they're definitely doing a good job just in case like Marvel Studios is ever like, yeah, we'll throw you in a movie now. Yeah, just, which yeah. I personally think they should. Yeah, I they're definitely if, keeping that door open. If Daredevil nice. makes can make an appearance in the next Avengers, I would be thrilled. And maybe even not Avengers, but like maybe a Spider-Man movie coming up. Yeah, yeah, something just to show that he's there and that he's in the universe with these characters. Yeah. Um, Because I like what they've done. Have you watched Jessica Jones at all? No, Daredevil's the only Netflix show I've watched with. Because in that show, they definitely, and Daredevil, they throw references to the other show. Have you have you watched second season of Daredevil at all? Yes, I have. Have you watched all of it? Yeah, yeah, I'm all caught up on Daredevil. Just like warning... That we will be spoiling everything we talk about. Every, yeah, so if you haven't everything. watched it and don't want it to be spoiled, then you probably shouldn't be listening. But you know, at the end when F- there's the lady who talks to Foggy about going to yes. her, she is a big character in Jessica Jones. Oh, okay. And so both shows have characters from the others. Like Claire makes an appearance in Jessica Jones, mm. the nurse okay. from Daredevil. And so that's really cool. They've already established like those connections, so I'd like to see them branch out into the films as well. Good, yeah, I, I absolutely agree. I saw Claire, the nurse, um, I'm blanking on that actress's name right now. Uh, Rosario Dawson? Yes, thank you. Uh, I saw she's going to be in that um, <coughs> new show coming out. Um, I'm blanking on this guy's name too now. Um, uh, it's a new, he was part of Jessica Jones also, I know. Uh, is it David Tennant? No, um, he's getting his own show coming out. They oh, just Luke released. Cage? Luke Cage, yes. yes. <coughs> yeah, she's going to be in that, I'm sure. She seems to be kind of like the overarching tie through all of them. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, so you see, far, they least. released a trailer for that Luke Cage. Yeah, did they did, yeah. yeah. That was yeah, pretty I sweet. I'm excited for there. that. I mean, at this point, I'd be excited even if there wasn't a trailer because just the quality they put out already just gets me excited for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Netflix is just, they're they're kind of on a roll right now. Yeah, they're killing nice. it. Um, <coughs> yeah, you said Daredevil was your favorite, but I'm still very attached to... Uh, House of Cards. Oh, I mean, yeah, yeah. that's mm-hmm. very close second. Yeah. yeah. You, that, I mean, that new season blew me away. Yeah. The fourth season, by far, oh, in my opinion, the best one since the first season. Uh-huh, because I felt in that third season they kind of didn't exactly know. They knew how they wanted to start it and how uh-huh. to end it, but they didn't know how to fill it in completely, yeah, exactly. it felt like. so. But, um, man, that fourth season, that ending especially, mm, yeah. when they're... They both look at the camera and oh, they're man. letting that guy be executed by the terrorists. Oh it's yeah, just and such that. Oh my god, I don't even like have words to describe, like the emotion that scene held. Right, just a <laughs> chilling like shot. And <laughs> Seriously, just, both just staring at the camera. I wonder if we're gonna get more of, um, uh, Robin Wright looking into. Yeah, and, like, I'd like to see that in, wall. in the fifth season. Mm-hmm. Have her give the monologues to the the camera like kevin spacey did yeah yeah um as for me a show i've been watching is called the night of on hbo 
Okay, uh, I've heard of that, I think. Heard of it? Yeah. It's uh initially I thought it was going to be like True Detective, which the first <laughs> season of True Detective is probably <laughs> my favorite 8 hours of television. Really? Um the second season not, not so it. much. Mm-hmm. Second season like was entertaining. I thought a lot of people didn't like the second season and for understandable reasons. Um, I didn't think it was as horrible as everyone else thought, mm-hmm. but it definitely was nowhere close to the first one. Has nothing to do with the first season, also. Yeah. So, um, but yeah, the night of I thought it was going to be like that, and like the opening title sequence of the night of it looks like the opening title sequences of both the True Detective series, uh-huh. and I was like, yes, here we go. And it's not like that. It's kind of a slow burn show, same uh-huh. with True Detective, but it's not nearly as like trippy. Okay. It's, it's much more straightforward as where True Detective was very. You had Matthew McConaughey doing Matthew McConaughey like monologues every uh-huh. episode, and you're just like, "What the fuck is he talking about?" <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, the night of is very straightforward. Just to give you a quick like, what it's about is about this Muslim kid who lives in New York. He was born and raised in New York, just has ties, um, and so then he's driving a cab to go to a party one night and ends up picking up this girl, and then they end up going back to her house and uh-huh. they have sex. And then he wakes up in the kitchen, and then she is stabbed, like, 22 okay. times. And he's like, what just happened? And then the whole show is about both the ineptitude of the police in everything okay. and just the racism towards him, that he is a Muslim. And uh-huh. there's no real proof that he did it, but there's no real proof that he didn't do it. And that's uh-huh. kind of what the show is about. Okay. Um, and then it, it really shows, it goes to great lengths to show, like, the ineptitude of the criminal justice system, uh-huh. which is good and bad. Like, I, oh, I yeah. feel they spend too much time <coughs> on it at times. Yeah, points. that's, I mean, that's a fine line that I think, honestly, a lot of people don't know how to walk yeah. quite yet. But exactly. I mean, that's a whole different social issue that yeah. we're not, <laughs> we don't need to get into, but... I mean, kudos to, to trying to tackle that subject. Yeah, and they've gotten better as the show goes on. I just watched the third episode earlier today. Uh-huh. Um, and yeah, the first episode, like the first half was everything I told you, like the yeah. setup to the crime. But then the second half of that first episode was just like, let's show how much the police really don't give a shit about anything. Yeah, and I was yeah. Like, okay, this is just getting tired now. Yeah. Um, a little too one-sided. Yeah, yeah. Great performances, though, so far. Uh-huh. John Turturro comes in as a, a lawyer. Okay. Uh, defending the kid. And he's great, as always. I've never seen a John Turturro performance. Yeah, I'm like. he's usually pretty solid. Mm-hmm. Even in the goofy Adam Sandler movies. <laughs> I usually <laughs> enjoy his performances. Um, and then the kid that plays... Um, like the, I think his name is Nazir, uh, not the actor, the character's name is Nazir, Uh um, but the kid who plays him is really good, shows the subtlety of both, like, frustration in the situation and Uh just not knowing what to do. Yeah. Yeah. And so, yeah, I'd recommend checking out that show. I believe there's five episodes out, a sixth coming out. Um, That sounds pretty interesting. Also, while we're on it, HBO Ballers. I don't know if you've ever seen Ballers. Uh, No, but my roommate does and he says it's hilarious and I, i've always been interested in watching it yeah i love ballers um yeah. the first episode first couple episodes of the first season were a, a struggle at times uh-huh. the, not a lot of people they hired not a lot of great actors but then uh-huh. they supplemented it with like the rock and yeah. rob cordry and denzel washington's son is in the show really he's actually really really good um, I love The Rock personally. I think oh, The yes. Rock's yeah. amazing. Uh-huh. I love him. Uh, I know, like for a while, he kind of had a rep- bad reputation as an actor, but I feel like he's kind of grown into his own. And no, yeah, absolutely. Um, he's actually the highest paid actor right now. Yeah, which is thing. nuts. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I love The Rock too. Like you put The Rock in anything, and I'll go see it. Yeah. Um, and him and Rob Corddry have such a great chemistry on screen. Uh-huh. Uh, the only problem for the first while was the first season centered around this defensive lineman who was supposed to get a big new contract and the rock is his agent uh-huh. and the kid that played the defensive lineman was just a struggle to watch him act yeah like you could tell he was just Not trying experience. to remember the line yeah <laughs> um but other than that yeah great show season two has been great right good. off the bat so far well that's good yeah um so that's it for tv shows for me oh, sp- oh i speaking of uh netflix shows yeah. um you watch bojack horseman at all uh, I watched the first episode one time. I was very tired and I was falling asleep, and uh-huh. so I didn't get attached to it though. So man, that that is a good show. Yeah, uh, it's, we're, not, we're it's another kind of show it. where you kind of have to get through the first few episodes oh, okay. and kind of get used to the groove of it. But it's kind of like Arrested Development, where oh, okay. it's just 
once you kind of get the hang of it, it's hilarious, mm. but, like, also has these moments of very serious, like, dramatic oh, okay. uh, periods, and it's it's insane. Um, so good. Will Arnett is great. He's BoJack, and they have so many cameos. Like, they just, like, throw in Dave Franco as the side character in an episode oh, like really? that. <laughs> I just watched, and so... I oh, know I love it. It's it's really funny. So I'd recommend that if you have the time to watch and kind of get into it. Good, good. Yeah, I'll I'll definitely have to check that out. Yeah. More. Um. Yeah. Any other TV shows? Mm, not really. Um. I mean to start Game of Thrones. Haven't done that yet. Mm. And I feel very out of the loop since everyone seems to watch that show. Yeah, that one. I do watch Game of Thrones. This last season was. They knocked it out of the park. Really? Like, I thought they were going to... Because the season before that, I thought they honestly took a little bit of a dive. Uh Uh-huh. And there were points, many episodes, where I found myself very bored. Uh Uh-huh. But yeah, then this season, every episode was like a knock out of the park. I heard it's pretty good. Brought something new. And the last two episodes were the two best episodes of the whole series. Really? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I have... I own the first season on DVD, but I just haven't gotten around to watching it yet. Mm-hmm. Yeah, first season I thought was really good, then had a tough time with season two, and yeah. I actually stopped watching, and then started. W- I watched all of them over again before mm-hmm. this last season aired. Okay. So. Yeah, I'm reading the second book, so I'm kind of trying to give myself some space. Oh, you're reading the books? Yeah, so I'm trying oh, to read yeah, the books before I watch the show, and that... You're a better man than most. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that can just be a slog. Those books are dense. Yeah. Like, 900 pages, and like, 700 of them are just like... Tyrion Mm, talking to people, (laughs) which is fine because he's a great character and he just manipulates everyone to Mm -hmm. his own uh, benefit, but it can be tough. (laughs) Yeah, no, I I mean, obviously, recommend Game of Thrones. Yeah. Once you get, I I remember I picked up a book at a bookstore one time and I tried to read like a page and it was very dense and very, I was like, I don't know what's going on. (laughs) Yeah. It just, there's just like random pages where they, he just goes into so much detail of random characters that you haven't even met yet. Have Uh, have no idea. And I'm not entirely sure what their purpose is. mm. I mean, I guess it's world building, but it can just be a slog to get used to, but it's good. It's good. Once you reach those points of like action and stuff, it can be, it's very entertaining. Nice, good. Yeah. Um, I also finished recently watching The Office. <coughs> the whole thing? The whole thing for the oh. first time. Oh, God. I watched the first season when it aired, and I think I was too young to really understand a lot of uh-huh. it. And so then rewatched it again, and oh, my goodness. What a so, great show. Yeah, what an amazing show. That is, um, the season after Steve Carell left was a little bit of a slog because it mm-hmm. felt like they didn't really, really know, know what, they, what to do. Yeah, but then the last season, I thought they really pulled. The it last season was and incredible. Had, yeah, a lot of people didn't like it, but I thought it was spectacular. No, yeah, I thought it was really good. Um, <laughs> and yeah, seasons one through seven just gold um, yeah. every episode. Oh, yeah. I thought they were amazing. I still liked. I don't know if it's. I wouldn't say it's my favorite even comedy series. I still like Parks and Rec a little more, and mm-hmm. I still like How I Met Your Mother and Scrubs a little more. But that those are more personal to me i think where okay. the office was very much just like well i should be watching this because everyone else is watching yeah. this um but i definitely if you have not watched the office yet or if you haven't you watched it in a while to. just go back and watch it yeah all. i've been meaning to actually go back and rewatch it because that i think that is like my favorite sitcom yeah that one, it's a lot of people's TV. favorites yeah um <laughs> and i understand completely yeah i i would say i think parks and rec is probably the funnier one mm. because i think it has kind of crazier characters whereas the office seems to be kind of a little more rooted in reality mm-hmm. besides yeah. you know like uh, michael scott and those characters but like the parks and rec doesn't have like a jim or a pam kind of character it was kind of like the more grounded one um i think Anne kind of was like that for a while but even then she eventually kind of became crazy too a little bit a little wacky yeah and you could argue the adam scott character was <laughs> yeah for a while there but then the same thing the more they, they kind of slowly made him have his own his own like, the whole cones of dunshire yeah thing. exactly <laughs> <laughs> but i think ron swanson is the best character that's ever been on tv i completely agree i'm glad you said that i love, uh, yeah. I love ron swanson character. nick offerman is just awesome yeah. as him too no, completely agree. But I, th- I also think the series finale of The Office is um, so good. Such a good series finale. Um, 
I loved like every second of it, and that even made me cry. Mm. Not even gonna. I'm not. I'm not ashamed to admit it. No, I I cried as well <laughs> during the whole love <coughs> monologue and like montage with uh-huh. Jim and Pam. Like, mm, if that doesn't yeah. tug at your heartstrings after you've watched it all, your like, heartless, soulless, yeah, <laughs> being. Yeah, that. Oh God, that last episode, especially when uh, Michael mm, when shows Michael up comes back. to be my uh, Dwight's best man. Mm-hmm. Just so good. I loved it. Yeah, that was that was amazing. I thought it was interesting because for a while I. I think this is just a theory I have. I don't know. Someone Uh out there might know for sure. But I think Steve Carell might have been getting paid per line because Uh he only had like three lines in that episode. (laughs) Yeah. And I thought it was weird. There were moments where I was like, he should be talking, but he's not. Uh Uh-huh. So, yeah, I thought that was interesting. But it that was only because I I don't know why. I'd watched it so fast. Mm -hmm. I think I was so used to Michael talking that if you're watching it in – as this season was airing, I don't think you would have noticed. Yeah, I definitely, because I, wa- I watched that show as it was on. Um, I, I started watching it since, the like, the first episode. Mm. And um, I definitely, I could see that when, if you're, like, binge-watching them all back-to-back-to-back to back to back like that. Yeah. You can get used to having Michael Scott talking a lot. But when you're, we already had, like, two seasons since he had left by that point when I saw it. So I definitely didn't have as much, I didn't notice that as much. Yeah. Um, I know, like, a lot of people said they wish he'd been been in it more, which I can understand that, but, uh, I thought it was pretty perfect how he just kind of came in, said, like, his one line that was just, like, completely, perfectly Michael Scott, and yeah. then that was that, and let the rest of the characters kind of have their moment to wrap up, because he already had his moment to finish yeah, at the airport yeah. and everything. And he, yeah, his, his finale was <coughs> good, too. <coughs> yeah, with, uh, Pam watching, like, taking him to the airport and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. And I love, I really liked how, this is the one thing I liked about The Office more than Parks and Rec, is that um, they had, they acknowledged the document documentary style yeah. uh, shooting, where, like, I loved that in the last season, they had, like, you know, Brian the Boom Guy kind of became a major character, and they'd yeah. have them talking to people off camera, acknowledging the fact that they had just spent, you know, nine years with interviews, and I feel like, I, I mean, I've only watched the last season of Parks and Rec once, I can't remember if they ever acknowledged the camera crew. <laughs> I don't think they acknowledge it at all during the series, actually. Yeah. I think they go with the style, but they, and that might have been a way to differentiate from the office. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, yeah, I, I agree, I thought that was very cool how, throughout the series of The Office, every now and then you'll see them, like, mm-hmm. telling the camera guy and stuff, like, hey, follow me, follow me, come, yeah, yeah. come check this out. Um, whereas, yeah, Parks and Rec, you don't get that. And even towards the end of Parks and Rec, um, it's like the interviews get a little less, mm-hmm. um, and the, the like documentary style gets a little less. <coughs> yeah. Whereas definitely the office does. never really lost that. Yeah. And I, the reason that I, that came to mind was because on the episode when Michael leaves, there's the moment when he's like, Oh, I guess I don't need this anymore. And he takes like his mic off. Yeah. And I remember thinking that was really cool that they had acknowledged that. Mm-hmm. That and yeah, when the Brian, the boom guy first when Pam's crying, uh-huh. she's asking him, like, what do I do? And uh-huh. then, he, like, you hear him talking. I yeah. thought that was really cool. Yeah. Now, I, I was a little afraid um, last season what they're going to do with that whole storyline. Because I felt like it... I was afraid they're going to go for, like, the shock value of having Jim and Pam split oh, love at the end. Yeah. And I felt like that would have undermined, like, a lot of what made The Office so great. Mm-hmm. Because I feel like the relationship between Jim and Pam was a part of the foundation of the show yes. through, like, more than half of its runtime. So I was really afraid that they're going to go with Jim and Pam uh, breaking up. Yeah, I, I was afraid of that at a point, too, but I thought they did a good job of yeah. building and like the, that and yeah. then having a nice solution to it. Oh, yeah, then the episode where they got bra- back together where it, like, interlays them in the parking lot with footage from their wedding Yeah, was phenomenal. I loved that scene, spe- uh, especially. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, that was great. Um, all right, should we move on to movies? Uh, yeah, let's do it. All right, what uh, what movies you've been watching recently? <coughs> well, I think uh, the big one is uh, Suicide Suicide Squad. Yep, is yep. the last one I saw in theaters. Um, mixed bag. Uh, I think going back, you said something about uh, True Detective season two, and you said it wasn't as bad as people made it out to be. That's kind of how I feel about Suicide Squad too. Mm-hmm. Um. It's by no means... Have you seen it? Yes, I have. Okay, yes. so, all right. Sweet. 
I don't think it's by any means a good film. Yeah. And by um, again, spoilers. Yeah, again. we will we'll, be spoiling it. Yeah. So <laughs> if you want to see it without knowing already, anything yeah. that's going on, don't listen. Um, I enjoyed it. I thought it was an enjoyable film. It, I'm glad I saw it. But you can definitely tell that the studio panicked with the reception of Batman vs. Superman and mm-hmm. interfered a little too much yeah. and tried to change the tone because that's its biggest fault, I think, is that it's kind of bipolar with its tone and mood and atmosphere and stuff it, like yes, that. Yes, yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, it goes from being, like, gritty and dramatic to freaking black skinhead playing and Will Smith is just shooting targets like crazy mm-hmm. and making all these one-liners. Yeah. <laughs> Well, that being said, though, Will Smith, in my opinion, was the best part of that movie. Will and Margot Robbie just yeah. absolutely acted the hell out of those characters. Oh, yeah. And I I was, I knew that was coming. Yeah. Like, Will Smith and Margot Robbie don't know how to act bad. Yeah, exactly. Um, Even when they're in bad movies, yeah. they still know how to act. And, like, those exactly. characters weren't even, like, written all that well. But with what they got, they killed it. Yeah. Um, I agree. I almost exactly with you is very bipolar tone. Mm -hmm. Um, and I was with the movie like completely. I was like, okay, okay. I understand all this and I understand how they got to this point and why Uh they're doing this, uh, until the third act when they get to the final battle moments, Uh uh, like almost every scene, I was like, why or why, why is this the, also the very beginning, I don't agree with the first two scenes they show are, Will Smith in the jail, and then Margot Robbie, and then Margot Robbie, and, and they then go they to go. freaking Amanda Waller, mm-hmm. and they go into everyone's backstory. I I thought I thought that was really weird. Yeah, it was uh, odd. I was like, well, yeah. that seems like an editing mistake. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that's what I think really happened was that uh, the film itself just wasn't edited great. Yeah, well, I heard um, actually that they had the film edited, and uh-huh. then Batman and like in the lieu of Batman vs Superman and everything going on there. Um, which I'll get into later. Um, but then they go and they had that, well, that one trailer with take the, a turn. We're, we're playing Halo, by the way, as oh, we're yeah, recording yeah. this. So, um, and they, they, um, <coughs> that whoever made the trailer with Bohemian Rhapsody going uh-huh. on, um, they, they went back to that company and were like, Hey, you did a great job with the trailer. Mm-hmm. Why don't you edit the film for us? And at times it feels like a trailer. Yeah. And so I, I can absolutely see like, okay, that's where they went wrong. Like, <laughs> uh-huh. I think they should have, whatever their initial plan was for it, just gone with that. Yeah. I think, yeah, I think they should have stayed with uh, David Ayer's mm-hmm. vision. Um, I haven't seen any of his other stuff, but I, he made End of Watch, right? End yes. of Watch and... Uh, he wrote Training Day. Wrote Training Day. And there's a, there's a second film he did. He, he did Fury. With that's Brad it, Pitt, Fury. Yeah. And those... From what I see, I haven't seen any of them, but um, they just seem much more gritty and kind of realistic kind of films. Yeah. And I feel like they should have stuck with that because I think that's what he originally planned was to have just the kind of gritty villains having to do, you know, good stuff Uh huh. instead of trying to make it this lighthearted, uh, random, like, classic rock songs playing as they're killing these weird-looking slug like enemies zombie things. Yeah, yeah. yeah i don't know what those were <laughs> yeah it's, yeah it's definitely the kind of movie where you kind of have to turn you really have to turn off your mind and just go with it because there's not a lot that it that there's not a lot of sense to it i feel like like when yeah. they're going to the city and their helicopter gets shot down yeah what shoots them what down shot, i thought it was gonna be the joker them? and i was like yeah. okay the joker's already gonna get there yeah um but yeah it was nothing <laughs> nothing they, they don't explain who shot him down why does harley quinn run off in that elevator Oh, for yeah. just one like ten, you know, thirty one second clip where quick, she's yeah, right up an elevator, roll, yeah. <laughs> fights off a couple of those guys, and then joins the group again on the top floor. Yeah, <laughs> and then yeah, I mean, it, 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 I didn't really understand what the enemies were. Like I know they're just like people that were brainwashed by the enchantress. And, mm-hmm. I don't know. Just there's just some uh, choices in there that I'm not sure why they made them. Or if they really had no other option because of what the studio was making them do. Yeah, yeah. Um, also, <coughs> I wasn't big on, like, the whole idea of the big bad. Uh, like, the Enchantress is the big bad, and I was fine with that. Um, but just the way it was done, that initially she's like, alright, I want to put this team together. Uh-huh. And then the reason that they have a problem and they need the team is because they made the team. Yeah. Um, is that they let the Enchantress loose on them. Yeah, exactly. Um, and so I would have understood more if it was just, like, June Moon goes and gets... 
um, taken over by the Enchantress, and then she, like, just starts instantly going. Like, she's, like, she's the, one of the foundations of the team is that they have this Enchantress. Yeah, exactly. And she's by far the most powerful member of the team. Yeah. Which, I mean, everything just went to hell so fast. Because, like, I want to make this team... Uh, here are some people, but the real best part right here yeah. is this enchantress we have, and they even, like, show her to the higher-ups when she, like, goes and gets the Russian, Whatever those like, war plan. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, don't worry, we've got this heart that I can poke a bunch yeah. to make her do what we want. And then, like, the next scene, the enchantress and she books pulls, it and yeah. like, just gets out of there so easily. Yeah. <laughs> and it's just like, well, shit. Yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. And then goes and gets a guy, a random dude, and just yeah. makes him her brother yeah. somehow. Yeah, um, they, I, that's another thing. Like, yeah. where did he come from? Like, why was yeah <laughs> just inhabiting this businessman? Yeah, this poor guy. Just, <laughs> just She just All shares the, the curse call. with him. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, yeah, he's got powers to, when when she does go just a wall, uh-huh. and Amanda Waller's just stabbing the shit out of that <laughs> yeah. The brother has powers to kill her. The pencil poking yeah, his just face. <laughs> like, stop, 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 stop. Yeah. Oh, the game's going. Yep. Um, <coughs> yeah, I'm not... Another thing I was confused about is that, like, when she, the Enchantress, first, like, awakens her brother or whatever, mm-hmm. um, and she's like, I have a machine to make that can destroy the humans because they've turned on us. Yeah. Go gather your power so that you'll be strong enough when I make, th- so you can help me make this machine. And then she leaves and I don't even remember what the hell she does. But then like, yeah, well she goes back <laughs> so she can run away again. Yeah. She goes yeah. back <laughs> and then there's the scene where Amanda Waller's just fucking just stabbing, stabbing the, the hell out of, of this heart. Yeah. heart. And she disappears and just goes to her brother who just, like, didn't do anything. Like, what did he... He just appara- just all of a sudden became freaking Anubis. Yeah, I And she's no like, idea. help me. Yeah. And so he gives her the power and then just completely negates the heart. Yeah. And it's the, like, so yeah. What, like, what happened? There's that... no, no reason to have it. <coughs> yeah. Sorry, if I, if I keep playing, I'm just not paying attention now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's just like... What, like, where did, how did that happen? Why did that happen? And just a lot of questions... Um, Lo- just logistically didn't make a lot of sense in some cases. Yeah, I honestly followed Lex Luthor's plan in Batman vs. Superman a lot better. Yeah. And honestly, I thought, I I was one of the few that did not dislike Batman vs. Superman. I honestly loved Batman vs. Yeah, Superman. Yeah, I, I really did. The I, first time I saw it, I was like, alright, it wasn't amazing, but it wasn't, it wasn't horrible terrible. like all these reviews are saying. And then the second time I saw it, I fell back in love with yeah. it, and I was like, you put them both on the screen. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Like, um, it's another it's another film that definitely I think suffers from studio intervention mm. because like Zack Snyder, pretty sure he just wanted to do Batman vs Superman. He just wanted to make a movie about those two, but Warner Bros is like, well, we got we need you to put these guys in there because oh, do we, we need, need you Justice to start the League franchise since we got to catch up to Marvel. Yeah, and that that's definitely like or I'm at a point with DC films now where I'm just letting them play catch up, you know, because yeah. that's just how it's gonna be for a while. Is that all these movies are just kind of fast forwarding what uh marvel did you know over the span of seven years to make the avengers yeah they're trying to get to the same point without yeah a whole lot of, without, without the, the same, same time, time frame. Yeah, yeah exactly which can definitely reduce the quality of the films because i mean marvel just marvel had the perfect plan and they executed it flawlessly i feel like in terms of making that kind of movie not necessarily that, you know, every single one of the solo films before it were fantastic, but they at least were able to establish those characters and the and the heroes. Yeah, and then when Avengers came... They didn't they, have to waste any time yes. getting backs or anything like that. Exactly, they just let all of them... Mm-hmm. Just be. Yeah, and have their own story <laughs> arcs within that <coughs> one <coughs> and they, time. They also allowed those, you know, post credit scenes to really... When they finally have that shot of, like, Iron Man and Thor and Captain America in the forest in the first Avengers really feel like, holy shit, like, yeah, these three this characters, is here, yeah. yeah, this is actually happening. Exactly, where I kind of got that feeling when Wonder Woman comes in in Batman uh-huh. vs. Superman, <coughs> um, 
Like that's one of the most <coughs> pump up move, move oh, moments yeah. of that movie where it's just when they're fighting a doomsday. Yeah, and she yeah. block. Yeah, and mm-hmm. she blocks the shot, and, and they the... get that music going. <laughs> in. Yeah. Dun, 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 yeah. Again, Hans Zimmer knocks out of the park with that soundtrack. Oh, is that Hans Zimmer? Yep, that's yeah. Hans Zimmer again. He, he does he's, everything. He's flawless. Yeah. <laughs> he's such a good composer. Nah, yeah. Um, yeah, but what uh, what did you think about the Joker in Suicide Squad? I, Jared Leto. See, that's the thing is, I feel like I didn't see him enough to make like a valid uh, consensus about him. Mm. And that's kind of what I was the most disappointed in was I was so excited to see him as the Joker because I, I mean Jared Leto is just such a fantastic actor. Yeah. Regardless of what you think of him as a person, I know he's kind of a douche in real life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very up his own ass, but um, he's such a phenomenal actor, and um, I was really excited to see what he did with that character. And from what I saw, I still think he can do something really good with it. I saw some people say he seemed a little too much like Heath Ledger's Joker, mm. but at the same time, it's. I just, I mean, how else at this point, how else do you portray that character? Yeah, Because, I mean, that's, exactly. that's the perfect, that's the perfect portrayal of it. Mm-hmm. You know, the only other one that can compete with it, I'd say, is Mark Hamill's work as the voice of the Joker in yeah. the animated series and the games. Oh, I was about to say that, yeah. But, uh, I mean, in terms of live action, Heath Ledger, I mean, that's the standard. You have to yeah, meet, exactly. live up and meet that standard. There's no other way to play that character anymore. Yeah, as well as, like, I thought Jack Nicholson did a good job, but mm-hmm. yeah, Jack Nicholson was very much just like, I'm watching Jack Nicholson yeah. be Jack Nicholson. And his Joker's <laughs> also a lot more campy. Yes, Which exactly. fit that movie, but in terms of a movie like The Suicide Squad and everything, it's gotta yeah. be a little more grounded, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I actually liked Jared Leto's Joker, <coughs> and I thought they used him <coughs> almost <coughs> the perfect amount. Really? I, I think if they used him too much, <coughs> then then people would, really would have been like, well, what's he compared to Heath Ledger? I think the uh-huh. comparisons really would have started there. Mm-hmm. And, I mean, he's going to come back. I'm sure Ben yeah. Affleck is planning him to be a major character yeah, in yeah, his I'm solo movie. Yeah, I'm sure he'll movie. be in the solo film. Um, and honestly, if, I, like, if they're doing the solo film, I think they should do a mixture of, like, Batman Under the Red Hood and Batman the Killing Joke. Uh-huh. Try and mix those two in a Definitely. nice way. That way you get a lot of the Joker, you explain what happened to Robin. I thought yeah. we were finally going to get some type of explanation. I was for Robin, hoping for, yeah, yeah, just something. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of, because there's the shot in the trailer. It's also in the movie when, like, the Joker and Harley Quinn are driving around and Batman's, like, on top of their car or whatever. Yeah. I really thought that would be, like, post-killing uh, of Jason Todd. Mm-hmm. And so we'd get a better explanation. Because, like, in Batman vs. Superman, we'd get the shot of the suit and everything. Yeah. That says, ha, 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 jokes on you and all that. So I really thought... With the introduction of Joker in this movie, we'd get some sort of explanation of it, but alas, we probably have to wait till the solo film. Yeah, which is going to be <coughs> after the Justice League. <laughs> yep. So we have a few more I think more he's still writing it. the script right now with Jeff Jones. <coughs> yeah, I'm sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I feel, I just, I kind of wish, I feel like they either had to like put a little bit more Joker into it mm-hmm. or just leave him out because as it is, he just kind of felt like this presence that just kept coming to annoy them. Yeah, which like might not necessarily it might not necessarily be his the fault of the character of the Joker himself, but like the reaction of the other characters, like oh, yeah. why when Harley Quinn like escapes with him, the su- the rest of the squad's like super pissed and like pissed like angry at her, and like borderline t- like tells a uh, Deadshot to shoot her and kill her. Yeah, yeah, and then the fucking helicopter blows up and she survives. And then she just comes back, and they're just like, oh, welcome back. Like, it's great to have you. Yeah, yeah, I thought that was interesting. I thought it was interesting. (coughs) I I felt there at least should have been a little more reaction from the other members of the Suicide Squad and, like, fear of the Joker, Uh that this Joker is, like, this This guy you you don't want to mess with. Uh Um, And I got that with the scene with Jared Leto when they have the prison guard in there. Yeah. And he's, like, making him kiss his ring and stuff. Like, I definitely got that feeling. Oh, yeah, yeah. That scene, I was like, okay, this is... This is his Joker, and, like, he is the man here. Uh-huh. Um, and so I was excited for that, but I, I wish there was a little bit more of that. But at the same time, it wasn't his movie. Uh-huh. I think an easy solution to that would have been make Joker be the bad guy Yeah, in the movie. Which I thought that also was going to happen. Yeah. I, I had no idea that Enchantress would end up being, like, the villain of it. Yeah, yeah. And it, like, it made kind of sense that she was the villain of it. Yeah. Like, um, just with her powers and stuff, and we already discussed how ridiculous some of the stuff was. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I thought, yeah, if you could have made it the Joker, the main bad guy, and not have as many ridiculous stuff going on, 
And it could be that he's just trying to get Harley Quinn, and uh-huh. they're trying to get Harley Quinn to turn on him the whole movie. Yeah. I thought that would have been an interesting plot, but... Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I think Jared Leto did a good job. Um, I'm not I'm not sure how I feel about him being portrayed as almost just, like, a gangster. Yeah. Instead of, like, yeah. a, just a agent of chaos. Uh-huh. You know, like, how kind of Dark Knight had him. Yeah. And how he is in the animated series, just this fucking insane guy mm-hmm. who's just... Out just to doing cause. whatever he wants. Yeah, yeah. He, he, like he has no purpose. He kills because he wants to, and um, yeah. As opposed as, to this as one, most, like the first scene yeah. he's in, he's like in a club. Yeah, like yeah. wearing his like re- like snake skin coat. Very, <laughs> very Scarface esque <laughs> scene yeah. where he's just in the back at his table. <laughs> Which like I, t- I I get like I'm cool with them like making him sort of more modern and kind of have that gangster vibe to him and all that stuff. Um, but I don't know. It was just kind of, it was kind of weird. Seeing him be like this Mexican drug lord type. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm I'm it, I'm I'm excited to see what else they do with him. Hopefully the whole, the Batman movie he'll have a little bit more of a presence, so we can get a better idea of what he's like. Yeah, and I I would love to see a backstory <coughs> of him too. Yeah. Um, I'm sure it's very similar to how the comics had it within the Killing Joke book. The, the um, c- comedian, like the struggling comedian who just kind of yeah. reaches a breaking point. Yeah, and then like falls into the vat of acid yeah. and every, all that. Um, but yeah, I would love to see that. Love to see like him going through and getting the tattoos maybe. Yeah. Maybe like a quick montage of that. Uh-huh. And just explaining a little bit of each time what the tattoos mean. Uh-huh. Um, I do wish they would have, like I hope in the Harley Quinn movie, they're making a solo Harley Quinn uh-huh. movie. Um, but I hope they go into her backstory more. I think she has a very interesting one. Yeah. And they did exactly what I was afraid of. I, just a quick flashback to it all, which... Quick gloss over yeah. what happened. Which was a good way of... In, well, good way. Which was a <laughs> like, productive way of introducing all the characters. Uh-huh. Um, and they but definitely yeah. spent more time with Deadshot and Harley <laughs> Quinn. But you also get Batman in those scenes. I mm-hmm. thought all the Batman stuff was great mm-hmm. in it. I liked how they used him of... Just kind of like a very from the bad guy's perspective. <coughs> yeah. Of just like, yeah, it's going good, and then this guy keeps showing up. Yeah, exactly. Um, and yeah, that he wasn't he wasn't quite as dark as he was in Batman vs. Superman. I liked him in Batman vs. Superman. But, Batman? Um, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. That he wasn't quite as dark, or he's not... He's not killing people. Yeah. Exactly. Which but, I thought was awesome. I really did love that. No, I, I did too, but rendition. it was good to see, like, before he gets to that dark. Yeah. Like, yeah. to see him back, like, in his prime when he's fighting uh-huh. crime. And get, yeah. getting all these people, so yeah, I think that's something that people missed. Like missed um, the point of in Batman versus Superman is that this is Batman kind of aged at his like breaking point and is just yeah. freaking fed up mm-hmm. with what's been happening. Yeah, and he's like the story is definitely about him coming back uh-huh. to being to realizing like okay, there are still good people in this world. Yeah, and this is kind of why I started doing this in the first place yes and i, I love that arc and yeah a lot of people didn't see it they were just like why is batman shooting people it's like well because you don't actually follow comics yeah you just <laughs> saw the dark knight and thought it was good yeah exactly <laughs> so now you're a self-proclaimed batman super fan yeah exactly <coughs> um yeah so but yeah the third act of it like I don't know much about Diablo, but uh-huh. I did not expect him to turn into some fire demon at the end. The freaking, like, Balrog. Yeah, from Lord and of the I, Rings. I was like, what the fuck is happening? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and so, and then when he fights the brother, who I still don't understand who he is, um, and that could, yeah, it could just be, I never read a Suicide Squad comic, but, uh-huh. yeah, I don't, I don't know. I, <laughs> I don't know either. I was I very don't... out of it at that point. I was like, okay, what are we doing what here? What is happening? Yeah. It was like, they, it just kind of felt like they needed a trump card. To these like omnipotent beings they had made, and like, oh well, why wouldn't El Diablo be able to yeah, transform exactly. into, like, Satan <laughs> and have this massive battle in the subway? Mm-hmm. I also wish we'd got more backstory on a Killer Croc. Yeah, I would. I was hoping that would be a Batman scene. Yeah, of like Batman fighting Killer Croc, and yeah, because that was Maybe also because we'll he was a really cool character. I liked him a lot. I did laugh a bit when he like crawled into the water at one point, and he's like. This is my domain. Oh, he's like, yeah. <laughs> like, there's this weird, like, slither walk. Yeah. Into the, like, dude, you could just dove into the water. And not just yeah. Crawl in like that. <laughs> and then he just comes out of nowhere again in the final fight. Just, yeah, he's there. He's going to rise out of this hole. Yeah. <laughs> 
Yeah, and did the other, like, soldiers just kill themselves? In yeah, the I don't know. Yeah, like, what happened to them? Sacrifice. Yeah. Like, they're going to blow they, up the bomb. Yeah, they have this whole idea of making these bad guys do the dirty work, and then they one of the, the Marines is doing, yeah, is making the self-sacrifice in it. Yeah, that, that didn't make sense. Or when they're in the bar, and, like, uh, Rick Flagg, like, breaks the phone, and is like, you guys can go, I don't care anymore. Yeah. And Boomerang just falls out. Yeah. out of that room. And then just shows up. And then up just, the shows, just walks back into the group out of nowhere. Yeah. And it's like, okay, well, that was a quick change of heart. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was reading a review, and someone was going through, which was ridiculous at times, going through of, like, how ridiculous the Suicide Squad is, uh-huh. and saying, like, okay, Killer Croc makes sense, because he can do pe- things moral people can't. Uh-huh. Deadshot makes sense because he can he doesn't miss a shot. But why like Harley Quinn and Boomerang and yeah, um, and like Slipknot made sense the, very briefly that he's in there. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, and like Diablo makes sense again things that normal humans can't do. But yeah, like Boomerang like they don't got drones. They don't have people that can throw stuff. Or like Harley Quinn like you don't have someone that can wield a bat. Like you're just gonna release this psycho in there. Which I was like yeah in real life that doesn't make sense but. They're staying true to the comics. Yeah, like, in the comics, she's there, and she's a fan favorite character. Yeah, and that's Oddly a good way to, me, to get the Joker back. Character. Yeah, yeah, get the Joker back into it. And... Yeah, Boomerang. I'm not sure why I was there. I thought, you know, I thought Jai Courtney actually did a pretty good job with him. Yeah, yeah, and he was much, one of the ones I think was there from the beginning. Yeah, much more lively than uh, his previous roles he's been in. Yeah, I don't know if I've seen him in anything. The only thing I've seen him in is he was uh, John McClane's son in the latest Die Hard movie that wasn't so hot. Oh, okay. Um, I mean, yeah. So he was kind of stone in that movie. Stone Not a lot of emotion or range, but he actually was pretty like entertaining in Suicide Squad. So that, I liked seeing that, that he actually had a range as an actor. Yeah, yeah. And then the only other complaint is they don't give a lot of people a lot of time. Yeah, they very they really focus on Deadshot and Harley Quinn. Yeah, Harley Quinn, and then everyone else is just kind of there. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's all I have on Suicide Squad. <coughs> yeah. Um, um. I mean, if you're if you like those movies, if you're a comic book fan, say it's worth a worth a see at least just to kind of under like get a the progression of that world and what's going on with it. But, yeah. I mean, yeah, absolutely. If you saw the trailer and were like iffy on it probably skip it wait or at least wait until it's out on like dvd or something yeah i i completely agree um another movie i saw the same day i saw suicide squad actually was it was called bad moms oh. and i i had no like expectations for it i thought i thought it was honestly a pg-13 movie but it it was about these three moms got mila kunis <coughs> and Kristen <coughs> bell and i don't know the other woman's name off the top of my head i think it's yeah, Catherine yeah. something yeah um i know you're talking about isn't she uh yeah yeah, she was, um... She's, like, she's one of those actresses who's in a bunch of stuff, and, yeah. like, you recognize her, but you do not know as, her. As, yeah, as, like, a small role in all this uh-huh. stuff. And she's always been hilarious, I thought. Yeah. And this one, same thing. She is hilarious in it. And it is the one of the most R-rated movies. Like, they're dropping F-bombs every other word and really? stuff. Really? And it was... But they do it in a great way. Like, like they had enough of a story around it, and uh-huh. it was, like, another hangover to me. Uh-huh. Like, the, the way I felt about the first hangover, where I was just very surprised at how funny it was and how well it flowed and everything uh-huh. so yeah bad moms i honestly recommend it was, all right it was hilarious i don't know if i probably won't catch that one in theaters but it's one i'd definitely be up for seeing at some point yeah yeah when it comes on dvd red box it or netflix it or um <coughs> but yeah if, if you are interested if it does sound interesting absolutely i think it's honestly more worth your money than suicide squad would be um, interesting unless you're a huge comic book fan then nothing's probably gonna just, be more yeah. worth your money yeah <laughs> it's just a comic book movie yeah I can't remember the last comedy I saw. New comedy, like, in theaters. Mm. So let's see, what was the... What did I see before... Oh, I saw... The last movie I saw before, Suicide Squad, was Lights Out. I saw that. Oh, okay. How was Lights Out? Um, it... it I wish... It had been better. It's not okay. bad. It's not bad. If you're a horror movie fan, I'd say it's worth to see. There's only some creepy parts. Mm-hmm. But it. I feel like they could have done a lot more with the premise. And it, it felt... At the risk of sounding incredibly hipster, it just felt too mainstream. Like, I don't mm. know. The thing that I love about, like, The Conjuring and James Wan films is that he kind of subverts 
uh, normal filmmaking techniques and like pacing and stuff and does some cool camera angles and stuff like that. And just kind of gives it like an old school feel to it while also maintaining like a newer, um, more fresh take on horror. Yeah. Where this one, I don't know, it felt very much like the style I had seen before. Um, mm. I don't know, just, I don't know why this is the movie that came to mind when I saw it, but have you ever heard of the movie Stay Alive? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> about the killer video game. Yeah, yeah, they're all playing the video game. And... Uh, it's it's kind of like that when I it's like that movie isn't great, but it has some creepy parts to it, and I enjoy watching it. Mm-hmm. Um, but lights out kind of it, it reveals too much about the the creature that's in the dark. Oh, okay. Too fast, I feel like. Oh, okay. Um, and kind of like once you have like a story behind it and are comfortable and familiar with it, it loses its like scariness, you know, because mm. it's really the unknown part that makes it so creepy. Yeah. And yeah. like the first first couple scenes that you don't really know about uh, her, her name's Diana in the movie. So when you don't mm. really know about Diana. It's a lot creepier, I feel like, because it's just this thing that is there and they can't get rid of. Yeah. Yeah. And like I, there's the, the last scene, the last sequence um, is super cool too. Because it's basically all the characters just, tr- like, trying to find all the different ways they can stay in light and turn on lights and stuff oh, okay. to hold her off. And that's pretty cool. Like, there's a part where uh, she's, like, attacking this guy and he clicks his keys because they're in front of his car. And so the uh-huh. lights flash. Uh-huh. And so it gets her to disappear and so he can get to safety. I just thought that stuff was really cool mm. and creative. But then the, just the, the the finale of it kind of ruined that sequence, unfortunately. Oh, okay. it just It just goes way too Hollywood. Mm, and yeah. it's just very corny. I find or, most horror movies have that trouble. Yeah. Yeah. It's hard to find a... It's, I mean, to their... You know, to be fair to them, it's... I feel like it's really hard to end a horror movie. Yeah, especially one like that that is like a ghostly figure. Uh-huh. That's not the same ending as every other yeah, movie exactly. like that has. So, um, it's good. It's worth the view. It's yeah. fun. Yo, absolutely. Yo. Making a podcast. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Hello. Shane's hey, we have a special <laughs> guest here. <Yeah. laughs> for a second. <laughs> but yeah, Lights Out. If you like horror, it's worth a watch. Alright. Sounds good. Yeah, um, other than that, I haven't seen a whole lot of movies. Yeah. Yet. The last movie I saw in theaters was probably Finding Dory before that. Also great. great movie. Yeah. I love that movie. Yeah. But Pixar can do no wrong for me. Mm-hmm. I think they're fantastic. All right. So uh, should we move on to sports? Yeah, yeah. Let's talk sports. So last night was Broncos' first preseason. Um, <coughs> yes, it was. Probably just focus on football for today Yeah. with the time we have left. Um, but yeah, Shane here, huge huge Broncos fan. I'm a big Broncos oh, yeah. fan too. My number one team is the 49ers though, so... There's just a little less to talk about. Then, so <laughs> we'd rather not talk about that. Uh, I but think yeah, they're going to have a good year, though. I don't. Or not. You don't? No, I think three and three to five wins. Really? They have a very tough schedule, and they don't really have a good solution <laughs> at quarterback. <coughs> so you're not a Kaepernick fan? Um, no, I am a Kaepernick fan, but I think Blaine's going to get the start. Really? Yeah. Okay. Kaepernick hurt his arm again. Oh. Just tweaked it. Okay. And so so that, yeah, that's Blaine's starting this first preseason game on Sunday. Um, uh, okay, I don't know that, so yeah, that could be. Yeah, and I think, I think Blaine's gonna start, and then he's just not gonna do as well as Kaepernick would have uh-huh. done in the system. Um, but yeah, uh, once they put Kaepernick in, I think it'll be, get a little better. I, I think I, defense I, is gonna be solid again. Yeah, I think it's they're in a better, they're going in a better direction than they were. I think getting Chip Kelly was a good move. Yeah, definitely. I, I'm a actually, step I'm a Chip Tom Kelly Sula. fan. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, glad they got Chip Kelly. I wish they never got rid of Harbaugh, but... Yeah, that was probably a really stupid decision to yeah, get rid of yeah. him. Because now he's killing it at Michigan. Oh, yeah, he was killing it with the <coughs> Flyers, too. Yeah, I don't, <laughs> yeah, that was weird to me that <laughs> he used to do a Super Bowl and playoffs, goes, and then they get rid of him, and now they went to hell, so... Yeah, exactly. Probably not the best decision on their part. Yeah, um... But yeah, happy topic, Broncos. Uh, Super Bowl <laughs> champions. <Yeah. laughs> for, well, we'll see. We'll see how they're, happy they are. They're but, still the defending champions. Yeah. You, you have that title for at we least do. a year. Um, but yeah, what did you think about the preseason last night? I think they looked good. We really did. Um, quarterbacks, I mean, there was anything spectacular. There's no Manning or anything yeah. that we have. But that's to be expected. To be expected. Um, and to be fair, I mean, we didn't even have that last season. No, you know, yeah, it Manning wasn't vintage Manning. As much as I love Manning, he definitely 
took a step back in terms of quality, but that's just because he's old and has done so much. Yeah. And there's just really nothing you can do about that. But our defense looked insane again. Mm-hmm. And I just think... Uh, Without a lot of the key players in there, too. Yeah. I mean, we didn't have Miller, Tlaib, or Chris Harris Jr., mm-hmm. um, which are pro- you know, arguably the three best we have, yeah. along with D-Ware. I was going to say, DeMarco <laughs> wasn't playing either, was he? <laughs> no, but... um. I know, like, once we lost Malik and uh, Danny Trevathan, everyone was saying, like, our defense is going to plummet, and, like, we were just screwing everything up, but... Yeah. <laughs> we destroy it. I mean, even if it's preseason, like, a shutout's a shutout. Like, that's still pretty hard oh, to yeah. do. And Cutler could... Um, I only saw the Mark Sanchez. I saw oh. the first quarter and then one series from uh-huh. Simeon, um, and then the very end when the fourth stringers are all in there. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. Um, But, yeah, Cutler could not... Do anything. Do anything when they are there. And without, like, Vaughn <coughs> Miller and DeMarcus Miller, like, <coughs> yeah, pass rushing and Chris Harris and Tlaib in coverage, like, that's that's scary that yeah, they're I that mean, good without like, those four. Granted, yeah. it's the Bears who, while I think they will be better, mm-hmm. still aren't a fantastic team. But, like, in any case, holding a team to zero points is an impressive feat. Yeah, ex- and so especially made, in the NFL these days where it's yeah. more geared towards offense. It was an exciting first look. At mm-hmm. our team, I think. And I think our defense is going to be incredible again this year. I just... Losing Malik and Danny Trevathan, and, and um, there's one other person that, for some reason, I can't think of that I am pretty sure we lost, but losing those two players shouldn't... It's not going to affect us as much as people make it out to be. Yeah. I mean, I think Malik did so well because he had you know, Vaughn and DeMarcus on the same line with him mm-hmm. being double and teamed. Wolf. Yeah, and Wolf. Yeah. Thank God, Derek Wolf is mm-hmm. an animal. But yeah, I thought it was really, really exciting to see kind of where we're at. I think a lot of people had some trepidation going into the season just because we, we lost Manning mm-hmm. and we're not really sure what we're going to do. But DT looked like DT again last last night. Which is good. Yeah. He, last year, he did not look like DT. No, he definitely had some struggles, yeah. which he's, you know, he still is, always has been, probably always will be. He's my favorite NFL player. Oh, I, love D- okay. I love DT. Yeah. Demarius Thomas, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Anyone that, yeah. <laughs> um, I know, like, he's had some struggles the past couple seasons, but, I mean, he's had he's also just had a hell of an emotional ride, personally, with his mom oh, and everything. Yeah. yeah. But last night, he looked like he was on it again. Yeah, and he that, made some great catches. Mm-hmm. Looked like he was having fun. Wasn't in, caught in his own head like he kind of can be. Sanders looked great again. Sanders just always, always good. everything, one hundred percent for the ball. Yeah, I'm, always I, good. I'm really hoping that we'll sign him this this next off season when his contract's up because mm-hmm. we need to hold on to him. Yeah. So like, as long as we can have a solid quarterback, we have so many weapons. We got and C.J. Anderson, mm-hmm. great running back. Yeah, Ronnie Hillman, great. You know. Backup. He's a great filler. Yeah. They got a new guy, didn't they? Also, <laughs> we got Devonte Booker, who Devontae looked also Booker. really good. Mm-hmm. Obviously, he's gonna need to develop some, but he looked great. Mm-hmm. Juwan Thompson. I was gonna say they still our, got Juwan. He's apparently he's our fullback now. Technically, he's the fullback, so he's, he's not in the running back depth chart, but he yeah. he's a great fullback. He can totally fulfill that. Well, role. that'll get him on the field. More yeah, too, exactly. Which is nice. And then Capri Bibbs is still on the team, and I think he's mm. great. He's from yeah. I've. Loved him since he went, he was at CSU, so I'm excited that he's there, and he he looks good. Good. And just yeah. people say he looks great at training camp, so I think our running backs are good. Rece- oh, whoops. Uh, receivers, <laughs> sorry, I just jumped off a cliff yes. in Halo <laughs> for no reason. <laughs> um, <coughs> our receivers stacked that talent there is unquestionable. Sanders and DT. Yeah. No, I, with that. Absolutely. I think Latimer, you know, I wish they'd give him more of an option, more chances, because I think he's a, he's a a he can be a good receiver. I think as the season goes on, he'll get more. Yeah. Um, Benny Fowler. Love Benny Fowler. Benny Fowler, yeah. He looks like a young DT to me, so yeah, I, definitely building I think him he'll up. develop into a really great player. So I'm excited. I'm excited for this season. <laughs> <coughs> I mean, I'm glad we have that. Uh, I'm still riding that Super Bowl high. Yeah. Like, it yeah. still <laughs> is crazy to me to think that we won the Super Bowl. Uh, it's just nuts. And so I'm glad we have that because, you know, if the season goes to hell, I can say, you know what? Well, at least... At least we had that magical Cinderella story for Peyton. Yeah, yeah. And that's, like, what's crazy to me is just how perfect that season ended. Mm -hmm. Like, a lot of people thought the 2013 Super Bowl, when we got wrecked by the Seahawks, was, like, 
the last chance. The last I chance think. for him to have that Cinderella story. Yeah. And I thought that too, like after he lost, I was like, how the, like, we can't give him that now. Like, there's no way we can do that. Mm-hmm. But yeah, morale was definitely in an all Just the fact that we were able that. to pull it off when it was even more improbable is incredible to me. Yeah. In a very un <coughs> Peyton Manning like way. <coughs> yeah. Like, that Super Bowl, they were the yeah. best offense ever. And then they come back with one of the best defenses, defenses ever, ever and do it. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I, I can't wait to see Vaughn play again. Yeah. I think a lot of people are like, he's going to get. He's, he's not going to play as hard. He got his contract already. I think he's going to play harder. That's just um, I, I heard he's a lot faster, too, yeah. which is scary. Yeah, if he's faster, because he was already so, like, watching a lot of the the highlight clips from the like the AFC Championship and the Super Bowl, oh, yeah. his jump off the line is insane. Mm-hmm. It's just incredible to me. Him and DeMarcus Ware, like, their read on it and their ability to just instantly accelerate and go yeah, yeah. is insane. Like, he, they're both in the backfield before Cam Newton even gets there. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, especially in the Super Bowl. The Panthers just had no answer for him, too. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then, as for quarterbacks, from what I saw, Sanchez looks... Good enough. Yeah. Last night, he was completing the passes. He was doing what he needed to yeah, do. Yeah, he, he had one incomplete. Yeah, yeah, and he, just, he, had, he had that one interception, but uh, that was, I thought that was a good play on whether, the the, I don't know part. if it was the cornerback or the linebacker. Yeah, that it was a good tip. Yeah, had the good tip on it and, like, just tip and catch. But, yeah, Simeon looked more comfortable to me. Yeah, in Simeon that one did. series. Um, Lynch, he looked, he looked like a rookie. I think he has promise, but yeah. he's going to have to take time to develop. He won't be the starter for a while. Yeah, he's he's... Yeah, so Sanchez into. are only there for yeah. what two, one or two years, years maybe yeah, one to two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so yeah, we'll see. Uh, Sanchez, I think you know, I don't hate him as much as a lot of people do. I think he's unfortunately just he always has the butt fumble. Yep, he's you know? always going to be the butt fumble guy. Like he can't really. I think it would be awesome for him if they if we could somehow you know repeat Super Bowl wins. Yeah, to kind of like help his reputation a bit. That would be really cool, I think. I'd love to see that. I oh, don't yeah. think it's likely, but... Talk about, like, a storybook. Yeah, like, exactly. You, you give go one the guy the Cinderella guy. story, yeah, and then this just total redemption story of Yeah, that'd be great. Because a lot of people forget, guy. he led the Jets to two AFC championships, one in his rookie season. Yeah, yeah, his so, first two <laughs> years. Those were also Rex Ryan's first two years yeah. there, and it was, like, seven years ago. Um, a lot of people have been throwing that uh-huh. out, and I'm like, well, let's remember it was seven years ago. Yeah. Like Tom Brady also threw 50 touchdowns, uh-huh. I think, one of those the year before that. Um, and he's not doing that again, I don't think. So, But yeah, he he, he's, he, he has the potential. If you have the right team around him, which yeah. the Broncos are a, very, are a better version of that Jets uh-huh. team, I think. Where it's very defensive heavy, and they're going to run the ball a lot, and they're not going to ask him to win a game, Yeah, I think, yeah. So I, I think he'll fit in well. He'll he'll do fine. I think. Uh, I think his decision making is probably what gets him the most trouble. Yeah. So if he can just kind of get into better decision making, it could be pretty well off. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, I do think Kubiak's going to start Simi in the next game, and then he'll make a decision from there of mm-hmm. who just looked better. Um, so don't be surprised if he's not starting the next game. Yeah. It doesn't mean he doesn't have the job. It just means they want to give Simeon another look. A chance, look. yeah, to play with the first stringers and everything. Yeah, exactly. Um, and then, yeah, that third preseason game, we'll know <laughs> yeah. who the starter is. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, good, good first, uh, preseason game. I watched a little bit of the Pats, uh, Saints game last night. Yeah. Before it. That was an interesting one. That I was. the whole breeze part was interesting. Just comes out, throws a 37-yard pass. Ingram fumbles and then he's out. Just yep. Like, yep, he looks good. <laughs> <laughs> um, from what I could, I just read the stats on that game. Uh-huh. Um, Garoppolo had decent stats. Yeah, but apparently he... the third stringer played better. Is what I heard. Yeah. Um, which I think is interesting. Um, I hope you know. I hope this Brady suspension kind of digs them into a hole that's hard for them to get out of. Yeah, I uh, think they'll go at best two and two. I a lot of people are like Garoppolo is going to take them to four and zero oh, and like. First of all, they have the Cardinals week one. Yeah. Garoppolo's not going to get past that Cardinals defense, no. I don't think. Um, <coughs> yeah, and I don't think Garoppolo. For years, the Patriots are trying to been, be getting Garoppolo to just be <coughs> enough to trade. Yeah. Um, so I don't think they all chips in on Garoppolo. No. So. I mean, I think Brady's going to be there for a while still. Well, yeah. Because yeah. he just defies age and time. But yeah, I mean, just as a rival team, I hope that Brady suspension does some damage to them to help us out. Yeah. Um, yeah, and then didn't really pay attention to a lot of the rest of the NFL. Yeah, I mean, there's not a whole lot yet. Yeah. I'll be watching more of the games this weekend to kind of get a better idea. 
But I'm just glad football's back. Uh, yeah, it's, personally. It's a rough, I, summer's always rough. Uh huh. I'm not a huge baseball fan. Can't really stand baseball. Yeah, basketball's um, just ending yeah. by the time. Once yeah. basketball ends, it's just a lull until football starts back up. So I'm glad it's back. I've missed it. The Olympics have kind of satiated a little bit. Yeah, yeah. But even that, like, there's only so many obscure sports mm-hmm. I can watch before I'm like, okay, I'm not invested in this and yeah, I'm, exactly. I'm bored. Yeah. <laughs> there's only so much water polo only I can watch. Water polo, handball. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, of... And, like, there's stars <laughs> in <laughs> Olympics. Like, you got Phelps. Yeah, I mean, I love watching greatest Phelps. Greatest Olympian ever. Yeah. I um, love watching Phelps. Uh, Ledecky, great. Ledecky Super fun really to watch. Good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, other than that, it was, yeah, just good to have, good to have football back. Right? Yeah. Um, I'm excited for the season, regardless of what happens. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, hopefully we'll at least make it to the playoffs. Oh, That's I, think, I can really hope for. I think they definitely make it to the playoffs. I think Broncos win the division again. A lot of people are seeing the Raiders. I don't think the Raiders have taken that many jumps ahead. Yeah. I don't, I don't see the Raiders. I can see them beating out the Chiefs for second. But yeah, I can't I don't see them running the division. Be. Yeah, um, yeah, and I think Broncos, if they win their division, will get a one or two seed again. Yeah, I'm but, sure. Yeah, and the Broncos don't have that ridiculously hard of a schedule mm. that they're gonna <coughs> drop off that much. Yeah, no, their their schedule is pretty average, I'd say. Mm-hmm. There's some tough ones on there, but nothing they can't yeah. handle. It is a tough draw to pull Carolina week one. Yeah, that game I'm scared of. I'm definitely scared of that game because yeah. I'm afraid Carolina's going to come back pissed. Mm-hmm. I'm hoping that it ends the same way in the Super Bowl did, Yeah, where they just can't do anything offensively. Yeah, I'm hoping they get kind of so lost in their like emotions, they kind of lose their, their composure, I guess. Yeah. That the sign of first, first bad sign that they'll lose their composure. Yeah, again. which is what happened in the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. That once they started to falter. As there. soon as that like strip sack fumble happened, touchdown yeah. happened, was, like that was the that yeah. was when the game ended. You could just right see there. in Cam Newton's body language that he didn't. He had no. He idea was trying, how to but he didn't have. Yeah, he didn't know how to respond. And uh, it'll be interesting. They got their number one receiver, Kelvin Benjamin, back. Who mm-hmm. was? I think he was a rookie of the year. The first season he played. First and only season he played, he tore his ACL last year. Um, but yeah, That's he rough. was he was a stud yeah. uh, when he was there. So <coughs> we'll see how he does <coughs> with them. Yeah, I mean, they'll be good. I'm sure they'll be good again. Cam Newton's just too good of an athlete for them to be bad. Oh yeah, I think they get the one or two seed in that division again. Yeah, and I think they're right back to the Super Bowl. I'm honestly. sure they are. Maybe maybe the Cardinals can beat I, them there again. I think hopefully. as long as Carson Palmer's there, I don't think the Cardinals are getting past the. NFC Championship. Really? Um, Carson Palmer has just always looked bad in the playoffs. Yeah. And last year it was evident. Even in the Packers game, even though they won that game, uh, it was not to the aid of Carson Palmer, I No, thought. it was Fitzgerald on It was Fitzgerald in the defense, play. I yeah. thought, even though they gave up two Hail Marys <laughs> in the last 10 minutes. But, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they held off Rodgers enough to that point. Yeah, so, I mean, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, we will. Who knows? Um, they'll still be dominant. I think they'll still win that division with the 49ers uh-huh. um, and they'll have a great regular season again. But yeah, I just don't know if Carson Palmer's got the medal to do it in the playoffs. Yeah, who knows? All right. Well, yeah, that looks like we're just at about time. That is our time for this week's show, but thank you for listening and we'll be back maybe with video next time. We're not sure. We're going to be experimenting with all different kinds of formats. So if you liked this, uh, please subscribe or leave a like or something and uh stay tuned next week we'll let you know when it's going up and uh yeah thanks for listening bye bye